Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Faith Lutheran Mission Church on this Pentecost Sunday. Nice looking red out there. And it's good to see everyone who's out there in the pews. And if you're even wearing red out there watching us online, thumbs up. Thank you. Caleb's going to bring us into the presence of the Lord with our for prelude. And then we'll go into our new member ceremony after that. I ask you to open up your hearts and minds for what God does have to say for you today.
to that day when all of your children will be one in you. Amen. And our congregation would like to give you gifts as members of our congregation. Devotionals. Welcome to our new members of Faith Through the Mission Church. Big hand. What's our answer? Sins. 
as a called and ordained minister of Lutheran congregations and mission for Christ and by God's authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the <coughs> feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. to these bones and say, 
Dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the Solomon Lord said. Look, I am going to put breath into you and make you live again. I will put flesh on and muscles on you and cover you with skin. I will put breath into you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I spoke this message just as he had told me. Suddenly as I spoke, there was a rattling noise across, noise all across the valley. The bones of each body came together and attached themselves as complete skeletons. Then as I watched, muscles and flesh formed over the bones. Then the skin formed to cover their bodies, but still they had no breath in them. Then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to the wind, son of man. Speak a prophetic prophetic message and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says, come, O breath, from the four winds, breathe into these dead bodies so that they may live again. So I spoke the message as he commanded me, and the breath came into their bodies. They all came to life and stood up on their feet, a great army. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones represent the people of Israel. They are saying, what have become old dry bones, all hope is gone, our nation is finished. Therefore prophesy to them and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says, O my people, I will open your graves of exile and cause you to rise again. Then I will bring you back to the land of Israel. When this happens, O my people, you will know that I am the Lord. I will put my spirit in you and you will live again and return home to your own land. Then you will know that I am the Lord that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done what I have said. Yes, the Lord has spoken. The Psalms is Psalm 139, 1 through 12. It's also in the Green Hymnal, page 248. We'll read responsibly. Lord, you have searched me out and know me. You have know, you know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it altogether. You press upon me behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning, and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea. Even there your hand will lead me, and your right hand hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me, and the light around me turns night. Darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. For you yourself created my inmost hearts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. The second lesson is Acts 2, 1 through 21. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven like a roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared to settle on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages. As the Holy Spirit gave them this ability, ability at that time they were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, everyone came running, and they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. They were completely amazed. How can this be, they exclaimed. These people are all from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages. Here we are, Parth Parthians, Medes, Elamites, people from Macedonia, Judea, Cappadocia, Socia, Pontus, and the province of Asia. Pelagra, Femphala, Egypt, and the areas of Libya around Serene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. And we all hear these people speaking in our own language about the wonderful things God has done. They stood there amazed and perplexed. What can this mean, they asked each other. But the others in the crowds ridiculed them, saying, they are just drunk, that's all. Then Peter stepped forward with the eleven other apostles and shouted to the crowd, Listen carefully, all of you, fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem. Make no mistake about this. These people are not drunk, as some of you are assuming. Nine o'clock in the morning is much too early for that. No, what you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. 
In the last days, God said, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, and young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. In those days I will pour out my spirit even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will pros pros prophesy. And I will cause wonders in the heavens above the signs and the earth below, blood and fire and the clouds of smoke. The sun will become dark and the moon will turn blood red before that great and glorious day of the Lord arrives. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Please rise as you are able for the gospel. lives 
of unbelievers or people who have not yet understood or accepted what Jesus is all about. And if we take a look at the next chapter after our gospel text that we read for today in John chapter 16, verses 8 through 11, tell us all about that. Jesus says this, And when he comes, he will convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. The world's sin is that it refuses to believe in me. Righteousness is available because I go to the Father and you will see me no more. Judgment will come because the ruler of this world has already been judged. The Holy Spirit will convict the world of sin and convince people of the righteousness of Jesus and also of God's judgment. Now this word convict comes from the Greek word eleko, which means to expose and to convict with a compelling evidence. The word is actually a, used as a legal term in a court of law, and it's used by a prosecuting attorney to show the guilt of a person who is on trial. God's Holy Spirit works in our hearts and our minds to convict us of our sinfulness. And we need to be convicted of this because apart from God's grace, we are sinful people. No people think that they are pretty darn good. And just ask anyone, are you a good person? Statistics show that 90% of people will say that uh, they are very good people. Most of us are convinced of our own inherent goodness. So it's the work of the Holy Spirit to show us that we are, in fact, uh, not really that good. Now, if your standard of comparison is, uh, say, Hitler or Saddam Hussein, yeah, we are good. However, what if our comparison is with uh, Mother Teresa or Jesus Christ himself? How good are we then? Romans chapter 3, verse 23, reminds us of how good we really are. For everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. So then, if nobody is perfect, how could we possibly be good enough? <clears throat> and that's what the Holy Spirit convicts us of. We're not good enough. And there's nothing we can do by ourselves to be good enough to be saved. That's the first purpose of the Holy Spirit, to convict us of we are not good enough. And there's, like I said, there's nothing that we can do for that. So the Holy Spirit convicts us of our inability to save ourselves on our own. We need, definitely need, divine help. And this is the big difference between the Holy Spirit and Satan. The Holy Spirit convicts us, then builds us up within that conviction. The devil condemns us, then proceeds to tear us down, physically, mentally, and spiritually. With the Holy Spirit, there is hope. With the devil, there is only despair. <clears throat> so this brings us to the second purpose of the Holy Spirit, and that is to convince people of the righteousness of Jesus. Jesus says this in John chapter 16, verses 8 through 10, And when he comes, he will convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. The world's sin is that it refuses to believe in me. Righteousness is available because I go to the Father. This phrase means that the only way we can be right with God because of our sinfulness is that God has to provide the way for us. Now the Greek word for righteousness is the word dikesune, which means one who has the authority to justify, give freedom, and to declare someone to be righteous. 
And the only way, the only way to be righteous in God's eyes is through His Son, Jesus. Jesus states this Himself when He says in John chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. A week from tomorrow is Memorial Day. And on this day, we celebrate the freedoms that we have. And the reason that we have those freedoms is because people put their lives on the line and gave their lives for us. In a sense, they became our substitute. They took our places and offered themselves for us for those freedoms. The same thing is true spiritually. We can enjoy the fruit of the Holy Spirit and God's spiritual indwelling within us because of Jesus' sacrifice for us. God takes the perfect righteousness of Jesus and because of his sacrifice on our behalf, God then places that same righteousness on all who believe in the saving grace of his Son. God took our sinfulness and placed it on Jesus so that by his one sacrifice, he paid the penalty for all of our sins and enabled us to live a free life. Take a look back at Romans chapter 3 again. Take a look at verses 20 through 22. It explains about this truth. For no one can ever be made right with God by doing what the law commands. The law simply shows us how sinful we are. But now, God has shown us a way to be made right with Him without keeping the requirements of the law, as was promised in the writings of Moses and the prophets long ago. We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. Just as the blood of servicemen and women paid for our freedoms, so the blood of Jesus paid for our spiritual salvation. Now, after the Holy Spirit gives conviction and convinces a person of the truth of Jesus and all that he has accomplished for us, John chapter 16, verse 13, then says that the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. And the truth spoken here is everything that Jesus taught and said. Jesus says this in John chapter 14, verse 26. But when the Father sends the Advocate as my representative, that is, the Holy Spirit, He will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you. Folks, the Holy Spirit will guide you. It's a promise from Jesus Himself. Now here's something we need to understand. The verb tense used here in the Greek language indicates that this is a present and ongoing process. This means that the Holy Spirit will guide us and will continue to guide us. And this guidance from the Holy Spirit is not just a one-time thing, but rather is a lifetime experience. Now, the disciples were having a little bit of a hard time understanding this. Because for over three years, they had been physically looking to Jesus for their help. And yet, in verse 7, Jesus says this, But in fact, it is best for you that I go away. And the disciples were having a whole lot of difficulty in believing that. The disciples couldn't understand how they could possibly do the things Jesus called them to do without his physical presence being there. And still, back in John chapter 14, verse 12, Jesus had given them this promise when he says this, I tell you the truth, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works because I am going to be with the Father. Scripture tells us that after Jesus' death, 
and subsequently through the work of the Holy Spirit, over 100,000 people came to know Jesus through the work of the disciples. The gospel not only went to the towns of Israel, but to Spain, Ethiopia, Rome, and even India. And over the last 2,000 years, it's gone every tribe, nation, and language and tongue upon the earth without Jesus physically being there to do it. This tells me we can do a lot more than we think we can. And that all the help we need is what God supplies through His Holy Spirit. However, you might be thinking just what the disciples were thinking. I can't possibly do that. The truth is, though, you can with the help of the Holy Spirit. Nothing is impossible with God's help through His Holy Spirit. And Jesus promised this exact thing when He says in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 26, humanly speaking, it is impossible, but with God, everything is possible. Trust yourself. Trust God and trust the Holy Spirit. You will be amazed at what you can do under His influence. So if we look at the work and the purpose of the Holy Spirit, we realize that it is uh, He who does all the saving, all the guiding, and the strengthening. However, there is a role and function that all of us have. You and I need to plant and water the seeds of truth and salvation for people. And yet it is God who uh, produces the harvest. The same is true for me speaking the word of God from up here. I can exegete all the words from the Greek and Hebrew that I want. But unless it is the Holy Spirit speaking through me, everything will fall flat. And the same holds true for the Holy Spirit working in your hearts and minds. <coughs> Just as you listen to these words from God's Holy Word. This third person of the Trinity, equally God with all His divine powers, is here to help us. And the Holy Spirit does this by uh, convicting and convincing us. Then, supplies us with all the help we need to do the work that God has called each of us to do. And that's why we celebrate Pentecost. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for sending your Son as the sacrifice for our sins. And we also thank you, God, for your Holy Spirit, which convicts and convinces us of the truth that is proclaimed in your Holy Word. Help us, Lord, this Pentecost Sunday to be the uh, flames of your holy truth, which can set everyone around us free from the bondage of sin. And we pray this in the holy name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Our next hymn is, O Holy Spirit, Enter In. This is hymn number 459 in the green hymnal. Words will also be up on the screen.
proclaim together the words of our Christian faith. I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was thus crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and dead. dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, we thank you for Pentecost Sunday to remind us of the flames that you have promised that is within us to be able to proclaim your holy truth because the truth is within us. Help us, Lord, to, to pass that flame on to the others around us as we go out those front doors into our mission field. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for your peace. We pray for your shalom to all those who may be mourning at this time for lost loved ones. And we've lost a lot of saints here in the past few months. And Lord, we pray for Marianne at this time to bring her peace. Lord, we pray especially for peace for Roy as well. Lord, bring us peace as, as we are reminded of all the saints we have lost and the saints who are still uh, waiting to be brought into your arms. Lord, in your mercy. Hear yeah. our prayer. We continue to pray, Lord, for your healing. You are not only the God of peace, but you are also the Jehovah Rapha, the God of healing. So, Lord, we ask you to come down now with your Holy Spirit to touch all of those people who are in our hearts and minds that are in need of your healing touch, whether that's in body, mind, or spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for your peace in this nation, and it's uh, it's going to happen only through us as we can and show your love and show your peace to others around us. Lord, we pray for your guidance and your peace and your protection for all of our nation's leaders, from our president down to our school boards and city councils. Lord, protect them, guide them, give them discernment in the decisions that they make for this country and our counties. And Lord, we ask that uh, you are with them and guide them as well. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those people who are putting their lives on the line for this nation. Not only those who have gone before and will celebrate that next weekend with Memorial Day, Lord, we ask you to come down and protect those people who are still putting their lives on the line for our freedoms here. All those soldiers, Lord, who are out on mission. When that mission is complete, Lord, bring them home safely. And then remind us that we need to stand by them as they stood by for us. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. And we pray, Lord, for those people putting their lives on their line in our own communities. Law enforcement, fire department, ambulance personnel, even emergency room personnel and hospital, Lord, to protect them while they are on shift. Remind us, Lord, every time we hear a cyber, we need to. Pray for those responding officers and pray for that situation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those missionaries that we support individually and as a congregation. Protect them, Lord. Keep them safe. Protect them from any kind of human evil and evil of Satan. And Lord, please protect all of their ministries from any kind of human evil and evil of Satan. And please provide them, Lord, with the resources they need to do those ministries you've called them to. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, again, once again, we pray for your peace. We pray for your shalom to come down in this world because it is messed up. And we need your peace. And it's only your peace that is going to bring any kind of balance to this, this country. And we pray especially for the Mideast. We also pray for East Asia, West Asia, South Asia. We pray for Eastern Europe, Western Europe. Lord, that are in turmoil at this time, Lord, either politically or socially, Lord, bring your peace. When we hear something on the media, Lord, hear something on TV, read it, Lord, remind us that at that time is when we need to pray. Instead of just shaking our heads saying there's nothing we can do. Yes, we can. We can pray. So, Lord, use it as a reminder every time we hear something that we might not agree with. Lord, pray for your peace. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. If there's anyone who has any prayers that they would like to make at this time, please go ahead and say them. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in the mercy of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Please share that peace of God with one another. <laughs> Take our offering at this time. I thank you in advance for your grateful and gracious hearts. Anyone who is watching us online that would like to provide towards our ministries here at Faith Lutheran Mission Church, the address is at the bottom of the screen. If you could write us out a check and send it to us, we promise to use it for building the kingdom of God. Also, PayPal is available.
mighty and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who rose from the bounds of death and, as he had promised, poured out his spirit and life upon all of his chosen disciples as well as us. And at this the whole earth exults in boundless joy, and so with the church on earth. In the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending Thank you. 
blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Amen. Amen. Please rise as you are able for the benediction. And may the Lord bless you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord shine His face upon you and give you His everlasting strength, peace, and protection. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Kids up here, if you want Sunday school down to go. Otherwise, the rest of the children of God have got one more hymn to sing. And hey, you're in the balloon up there. That's where the Holy Spirit is. Joyful, joyful, we endure thee. Hymn number 551 in the green hymnal. Words will also be up on the screen.